Welcome back, everybody, to another extra special. Now, the same as every week, let's say. <laughs> what If Recap, where this week Marvel's animated show What If asked the question, it's just zombies. What if zombies? Yeah. They didn't even really need, you know, the 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 origin of the zombies, the quantum virus, the et cetera. No. I mean, it's nice to have it, but I mean... You know, mm. but the people aren't in it for that. They're just like, what if zombies? <laughs> they, the, these Marvel, Marvel knows what the public want. This is quite, you know, a, a different from because um, Marvel comics have had numerous strains of Marvel zombies. Yes, they originated. I think also leave a like. Yeah, if you people could. should leave yeah. a like. Do, do the thing. Yeah, <laughs> yes. yeah, yeah. Um, they originated in, uh, I believe, Ultimate Fantastic Four, okay. which was a sort of a parallel. Uh, Marvel comic book universe, which was like a sort of a modernization of a lot of classic Marvel comic characters for the modern age. Mm -hmm. And that was a Mark Miller story, I think. But then they got their own uh, zombie uh, series, just Marvel Zombies, which was written by Robert Kirkman, who um, who created The Walking Dead and Invisible. So That's right, yeah, most famously. That's, that's it. So, yeah, there's been multiple iterations, and there were little hints towards the comics like along the way, which, are, which I'm sure we'll, we'll talk about. Also, thank you to the people who went to bigsandwich.co to, and sign up early and get, you get the audio version of this early or whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I thought was interesting about this week as well? Two weeks, uh, we've had two episodes, sorry, where Hank Pym is the villain. Right, yeah. And there's a pretty grim trend in a lot of these. Like it was, you know, Avengers were murdered. Uh, you know, zombies and what was the one last week that was uh, quite, yeah, Doctor Strange evil stuck in a little mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> awful dimension where he destroyed everything. Yeah. Uh, uh, most of these just like, what if, just but terrible. It's terrible. Well, I mean, is that a function of the fact that uh, Marvel probably have more interesting heroes than they do villains? So okay, like, sure, yeah. if you got, you got to do something with the heroes, you know what I mean? If you, if you, if you're like, what yeah. if, what if Red Skull was slightly worse? <laughs> I don't know. Bigger, bigger Hydra symbols? I don't know. A squid, maybe? Maybe a squid. Maybe there's a squid, yeah. But what is interesting, I think, about these Marvel zombies as distinct from the comic book Marvel zombies is the comic book, the comic book Marvel zombies are, for the most part, intelligent. Yes. Their intelligence sort of wavers up and down. It sort of depends on how much how many brains they've eaten recently, but they can yeah, sort of... It's, it's hunger levels and, yeah. Yeah, stuff, but they yeah. can sort of... They they can carry on conversations. They retain a lot of their yep. intelligence. They can, you know, use, you know, all the, all the weapons and powers and stuff that they had, you know, when they were alive. These Marvel zombies, they can still use their powers to some extent. Yeah. But they are just... They are otherwise sort of your classic kind of Romero or Zack Snyder zombies that are just kind of mm. brainless and shambling. And Hawkeye can still use his bow because I guess that's ingrained into him, but he can't, you know, have a conversation about Budapest, for example. <laughs> no. That's, that's right out the window. Oh, mate. The thing that he loves the best in the world. <laughs> that's right. And I think that's that's probably my favourite thing about that character, mm-hmm. that thing that he brings up every now and then. <laughs> yeah, but so this week we've got Mark Ruffalo, Sebastian Stan, Evangeline Lilly, Paul Rudd, John Favreau, Denai Guerrera, Emily Van Camp, David Dash Mulchin, and then surprise appearance, but not really, by Chadwick Boseman mm. uh, and Paul Bettany at the end, which again speaks to that thing I said a few weeks back of like, maybe don't put all the names up top because then you know Black yeah. Panther's going to show well, up. Well, I mean, that is true, but also I, you know, I, at the same time, I, I I always get a little thrill when I see the the title sequence and I see all the actors that are being... Yeah. Popped in and I'm like, oh, we're gonna get a, we're gonna get an Emily Van Camp, we're gonna get a Mark Ruffalo. That's yeah, that's like, true. We're gonna get a guy that sounds, we're gonna get a guy that sounds quite a lot like Tom Holland. Very, very good work. Oh, yeah, Hudson Thames. Yeah, he does an excellent Tom Holland. Also, apparently, and correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, which I'm sure people will. This is like the first time Uncle Ben is mentioned in this universe by name. It seems that way. Like it's... we see like his suitcase. Yeah, you know, there's obviously hints towards him, but. I see. Yeah, I I feel like it's it's it, it's definitely the first time Spider Man has referred to him as Uncle Ben. I think maybe Aunt May has possibly mentioned Ben in passing. Maybe okay, sure. But again, yeah. the, the comments will know for sure. They'll definitely know. But uh, tell yeah, us. I, I feel like it, it was quite jarring for him to say Uncle Ben. I'm like, huh? Mm. There you go. The, good for that, him. That got good for him. Yeah. Mm. So I've seen also, and and I can understand this complaint that the tone of this was a bit all over the shop because you get mm. like there's a lot of like darker stuff happening and then you just get in quips of just like I'm just ahead. I'm just ahead. Yeah. You know, it's, it's Paul Rudd just telling everybody. Well, exactly. You know, we we got as the aforementioned, you know, uh Peter Parker being really sad about, you know, the death of 
Aunt May and Uncle Ben and mm. Tony Stark and Happy Hogan and all that sort of stuff. But at the same time, he's making fun little zombie land style videos about how to survive the zombie apocalypse. <laughs> yes, exactly. Remember your yeah. cardi- cardio, you know? Yeah, I don't know if that um I don't know if that entirely works, the the balance. But also at the same time, like, you know, this is also a kids' show, you know? And well, even yeah, though was... you do get the gore and the, you know, it's a yeah, cutting heads off, it's not Yeah. It's it's not like you would get in, say, a George Romero movie. You know? That's true. I mean, I think that has been a fairly common complaint throughout this series as a whole. I mean, mm. pr- with the possible exception of the Doctor Strange episode, there has been quite a lot of like it's you know the the world is falling to pieces, but everybody's doing the quips. Yeah, kind of like you know it, nobody's taking it that seriously. And you know, I I I understand the complaint, but I also feel like this this series feels like it's for people who are very familiar with the world and don't mind sort of making light of it. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and look, and we'll talk about the ending. Just because there are, like, quips throughout, it doesn't mean it won't end on, like, you know, a, a darker kind of twist, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? It'll yeah. kind of leave things up up in the air. Uh, I liked how it did open with Infinity War, though. That's good fun. We've got plenty of beheadings, like, straight out of yes, the gate. yeah. Um, I enjoyed seeing the return of the Iron Man watch from... From um, Civil War, Happy Hogan sporting that. That's right, yeah. <laughs> for a time. I also like, and I guess this can be said for all the What If episodes, you can just be really dis- like disposable with a bunch of characters. Yeah. Uh-huh. You know, you don't have to be precious with anybody, which I guess we saw like probably most famously in that episode where they killed all the Avengers or when Doctor Strange killed literally everybody. I yeah. mean, you know. I think it was interesting either of those. going into this episode, I thought, well, you know, everybody loves Iron Man. We'll see. We'll be seeing plenty of Iron Man through this episode. Maybe he'll be the big bad. Mm. Uh, but no, uh, beheaded almost immediately. I thought that was fun. Yeah. Yeah, and, and same with so many of the other ones, you know, just they, they're they wearing the legendary costume, but they in, in a lot of ways they sort of become cannon fodder. It, I felt like... The fact that they don't really retain any intelligence yeah. sort of blunted the drama in a lot of ways. Like, you know, obviously we had Bucky, kind of, you know, having sort of this final showdown with zombie Captain America, but there's nothing really, you know, be- behind that beyond like, wouldn't it be cool to see Bucky fight Captain America, but he's a zombie kind of thing? Yeah, yeah, I get you. Yeah. Mm. And that's fair enough. Uh, I thought it was interesting how, you know, they brought Vision back and the relationship that he had with Wanda is kind of like the flip side of what they did in one division where one is keeping a version of the other one alive. Yeah. You know what I mean? It also reminded me, and this was, I can't remember which specific Marvel zombie comic it is, but Wilson Fisk is a zombie and he has his wife, Vanessa. He's left her as human and he's like protecting her in his penthouse. Mm-hmm. She's mm-hmm. like one of the last humans alive because he's still the kingpin. He's just a zombie version. Yeah, mm. like we didn't really get. Yeah, I, I felt like there there was you know as fun as it was, and it. I mean, the, the difficult here is obviously you have to cram a full zombie movie's worth of zombie tropes into thirty minutes. So you need to have like yeah. a man emerges into a world that he thought was normal, but then all of a sudden isn't normal, and he sees some people that he loves, and mm-hmm. and and he thinks they're normal, but then they're zombies, and then they have to. They hear a, a distress signal, so they have to track down the distress signal, and they have to get a vehicle working, and then they have to, you know, they go to the they go to the place that they think is their salvation, but then it turns out it's a you know it's a trap, and you know some people make a final stand, yes. and et cetera, et cetera. Like they had to pack that all in. So I guess what had to be taken out was kind of more kind of character specific moments. Yeah, hmm. yeah. I feel like that also speaks to like maybe the quips coming a bit too thick and fast, because just like. Tell a joke. Keep yeah, moving. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? No time to breathe. Let's just let's just keep it going. I also thought it was interesting how they did the Black Panther uh, is being used as food thing from the comics. That yeah. was something mm-hmm. that happened to him also. And also, do you remember there was, a, again, I'm not being very specific, but Hawkeye <laughs> was beheaded and, just, and he ends up just being like a head in a jar, which is like a similar thing to what they did with Paul Rudd. And I do enjoy like that Futurama style head yes. in a jar with the Doctor Strange cape around it yeah that's good stuff Mm -hmm. uh what did you think about vision sacrificing himself at a a very suboptimal time you know what i mean Uh just letting the zombies pour in and then scarlet witch breaks out and he's just like bye everybody like you couldn't have waited like 10 minutes just like oh there's the hangar it's like 100 meters away i'm gonna kill myself now you know (laughs) i guess he's not thinking clearly no that's true yeah Mm -hmm. now what do you think about that also that death is not the end speech from chadwick boseman in my culture Death is not the end. They are still with us as long as we do not forget them. It feels like every line that he gets now, it's kind of, there is 
so much more weight to it. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I wonder if that's. I, I wonder if maybe he pushed for that during production. Like maybe like. Yeah. Maybe just that that character has a certain amount of gravitas, so they wrote lines specifically for that kind of kind of tone. Mm. Or maybe he was like, "Listen, can you give me something that isn't a quip, please? If you wouldn't mind." <laughs> yes, please. Also, I think it's you know pretty funny to be like, "Death is not the end." Well, at least it's not in Wakanda, because well, the kings at least specifically go to live in a magic tree. I don't know <laughs> what happens to everybody else, but all the kings get to hang out in a magic tree, and that's great. Everybody that. else gets to live in a magic ditch. It's not as good, but at least you got that. <laughs> oh, it's magic, though. Yeah, it's magic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, cool. So this is one of the episodes also that I felt like I could have used more on uh, because it ends on a cliffhanger. Yes. We get the reveal that Wakanda has been taken over by zombies and Thanos, uh, who's missing one Infinity Stone, which is coming his way. Mm-hmm. Do you think they're coming back to this? Did, were you satisfied with the way it ended? Yeah, I love a good cliffhanger like this. Why not? I mean, you know, and mm. most of these universes are doomed. Why not? Yeah. Uh, do you think they're going to do that again like this season or next season or like at all? Or are we kind of I done want, this, I do wonder if maybe I, – I wonder if – some of these episodes, they are sort of throwing them out there to see what the, the public responds to sure, most yeah. strongly. And then maybe they could do, you know, uh, a, another episode or even like a full animated movie. Like, as I was saying, like, it's it's interesting they packed all the zombie tropes into this one 30-minute episode. Maybe if people like this one the best, they could expand it out. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so we've also got cliffhangers mentioned like that Doctor Strange episode where he's technically still alive. He could return maybe in live action even like the Peggy Carter episode, uh, we saw Ego and Peter kind of team up at the end of that episode. Uh-huh. That brings me around to when's the watcher going to step in and be like, I'm going to merge some universes. Are we still on that train? Is that where we are? Great question. Um, we were certainly on a train this episode. Very good. Great observation. Thank That's you. That's the kind of cutting observation you can expect here <laughs> at whatever this is. Folks, a few things you missed on this episode. A train. They were on a train. <laughs> <laughs> Did you think they were in just one really big car? Well, they weren't. It was on a track. So, <laughs> wrong, wrong, wrong. Uh, but um, yeah, he he. Uh, af- after last week's episode, I thought perhaps there would be a moment. You know, perhaps we would have you know uh, a zombie Thanos about to acquire the last Infinity Stone. But then the Watch is like, hmm, do I step in because he's going to destroy this universe? But then again, I got other stuff to do. And then he Who wouldn't. Yeah, yeah. But I I thought maybe that this would be. You know, the, the the second in the kind of third times the charm idea of like maybe he wouldn't interfere a couple of times and then things get too bad so he has to step in. But maybe it'll be next episode. Maybe they give yeah, us yeah. a breather. Well, next week is, what do we got next week? Episode six mm-hmm. and there's nine in total. And we know that there's at least, two, we know of at least two other episodes. There's the Party Thor episode mm-hmm. and there was the one where Iron Man is rescued by Killmonger. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Have you seen that in the trailers? Yes. When he's, when he, after that, you know, that incident which, Puts the hole in his heart or whatever. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I wonder whether, they, like I thought episode seven, they were going to start merging and you thought six. Yes. Do you, do you want to change anything about that? Gosh, I mean. Hmm. Bearing in mind there are no stakes. There are- <laughs> None of this matters. Whoa. You need to bear that in mind, all right? Okay, well then I'm going to say it's already happened. <laughs> I bet it's already happened. No, I'm going to say I think it happened. I think it will happen maybe if there, if there's if if we've seen Party Thor and this this Iron Man uh, Killmonger combination, that's two episodes. Yeah, I'm gonna say it's gonna happen at the end of one of those. I reckon. Okay, fair enough. I reckon maybe the whatever whatever episode seven is. I think he's gonna interfere in seven. All right, fair enough. Maybe maybe like right at the end. Yeah. So you're jumping on, uh, for lack of a better phrase, train my my train. Mm-hmm, yep. <laughs> you yep. know that yeah, famous yeah. expression. Yeah. Are you jumping on my train? <laughs> <laughs> and let me tell you, James. I have purchased a ticket at the ticket kiosk, and I've the the man with the with the with the little hat has, has clipped it, and I'm getting on that train, James. Your train. You could just do that on your phone now. You don't need to go through the kiosk. You could. There's a there's a barcode you can scan. I like the experience, but I guess you like the human interaction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I like I <laughs> like the it's it's yeah yeah I do. Yep. I'm uh, fair enough. I've loaded up my trolley with my suitcase, and I'm pushing it through the platform nine and three quarters. Eight and seven. But look, I've, I've, I said seven from. You know, a few episodes back, so I guess I'm just going to stick 
with it. Anyway, I'm curious to know what people think of this episode in particular. You got any more thoughts? Did, how, where did this rank for you? Was it a was it a good one? Uh, look, I, I had a, a great deal of fun. thought it was delightful. I didn't mm. think the action was as spectacular as maybe, you know, perhaps the, the Peggy Carter episode. Sure, yeah. You know, I felt, look, again, it's always nice to see, it's always nice to see, you know, zombies uh, in any context, mm. except maybe in a live context. Like if they were here outside my door right now, I wouldn't like that at all. No, no, no. But in any fictional context, I like it. Uh, I just thought it was a bit of a shame we didn't see them. It's it's not that they didn't feel like the comic book versions of the zombies. It's just they didn't feel particularly like they didn't stand out from regular zombies beyond the fact that they sort of had yeah kind of control of their powers a little bit, some of them. Yeah, no, I see what you mean. Because one of the things uh, I, I did like about some of the zombies is when you'd get their powers in full force. Like from the start, I'm like, we better be getting a giant ant, like Ant-Man zombie mm-hmm. like situation. And we did get that with, yeah. with the Wasp. And even seeing, like, what happens when Scarlet Witch, you know, turns into a zombie, that's the stuff that I, you know, enjoy seeing when you're like, what if the worst person imaginable, like, this happened to them, how would that, what would that affect? And I don't think we saw that the full potential of that necessarily for, for every character. Well, it's interesting that in the, uh, the comic books, one of the reasons that the virus spreads so quickly around the world is that Quicksilver yes. gets it. And then, of course, he can run around the world at super speed. Uh, I thought it a little interesting they didn't get either Quicksilver yeah. uh, for this. Maybe people were like, I was going to say maybe, maybe it's because they used him in WandaVision, but they used Wanda and Vision in WandaVision, and they, hap- they were happy to bring him back here, so don't know. Yeah, yeah, true. Anyways, as mentioned, these go up early at BigSandwich.co, plus a bunch of other early videos, including Caravan of Garbage. We're starting Casino Royale this week, and uh, a couple of days or a day or so after this goes up, where there's going to be a Matrix Resurrections trailer breakdown. Are you excited for Matrix Resurrections? Very excited. I've seen the, the tiniest of snippets, and I'm like, ooh, mm. jumping and, <laughs> and, 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 and rain and squids. My goodness. Oh, my. Have you checked out whatisthematrix.com like you did in 1999? I am very excited to do so. Oh, my God. That, that, <laughs> that was a, just a, just speaking of Easter eggs, that was just a, just a font of Easter eggs back in the day. Ah. Oh. Boy, was it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Good stuff. Uh, anyways, thanks, everybody, for watching. I'm at Mr. Sunday Movies on Twitter. I'm at Wikipedia Brown on Twitter, and I've changed my mind, I think, episode eight. Just just to be... Okay, fair enough. Just as a point of difference. Just, you know. All right, let's yeah, do it. That's right. And now, thank you, as always, to uh, Rob Collings for doing this edit. He does it, doesn't he? You, and we appreciate it. I mean, we're assuming he does it. Maybe he maybe he farms it out to someone else after you farm it out to him. Oh, he's outsourcing. Yeah, he's outsourcing, yeah. I think. Well, yeah. kudos. Yeah, right. Either way, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't work hard, cheat, and win. <laughs> That's what I say. That's right. All right, thanks, everybody. Uh, grab that gem, you guys. We will see you next week. Goodbye. Goodbye.